Hello again. Well, this time we are having another go at finding an enthalpy change of reaction using Hess's law. The reaction I've got here looks very similar to the last reaction we used. However, please note that we're only using two molecules of oxygen to react with the ethene, so we're producing carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. So we are undergoing incomplete combustion. And I'm going to use Hess's law uh, and the equation we found last time to help us solve this. And we should get the same answer for both. Well, according to Hess's law, the enthalpy change that accompanies this reaction is the same no matter how we get from here to here. So if we get to here from the elements and then use those elements to get to here, we can form an equation which we can solve to find the enthalpy change of reaction. Well, of course, the reactants and products must all be made from the same elements. Carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. So it's easy to just start like writing those all down. And we know that because we're forming a carbon molecule with two atoms, we're going to need two of those. And because we're forming a carbon molecule, uh, an organic molecule with four hydrogen atoms, we need two of those. And we need two molecules of oxygen. OK, we've got the enthalpy changes of formation. We've got one of ethene. So if we can form ethene from its elements here. So that's the enthalpy change of formation of ethene. The enthalpy change of oxygen, enthalpy change of formation of oxygen is zero. By definition, the enthalpy change of formation of any element in its standard state is zero. So I'm not even going to include that. Over here, though, I've got the carbon monoxide. It's formed from carbon and oxygen, so the carbon and oxygen are here. So I can just write that up here, showing that that arrow represents the enthalpy change of formation of carbon monoxide. And the water is formed from the hydrogen and the other molecule of oxygen. So we can write a, an equation over here, showing that that represents the enthalpy change or formation of water. So now, using Hess's law, we can say that the enthalpy change going from here to here is the same as going from here to here, and then from here to here. So, delta H reaction is equal to delta H formation of ethene. Well, actually, it's the negative delta HF because we are going against the arrowhead. Plus, plus now because we're going along in the same direction as these arrows. So it's plus. Oops, that should be a, there's two of those. So there should be a two there. Plus twice the enthalpy change of formation of carbon monoxide. Plus twice, oops, twice, twice the enthalpy change of formation of water. If I find those values and pop them in we end up with negative 52 plus twice negative 111 plus twice negative 286 and that gives me negative 846 kilojoules per mole. Now, if I now use if I now use my formula that I've got here, the reaction remember is C2H4 plus 2 oxygen giving me 2 
carbon monoxide and two molecules of water. So the enthalpy change of reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy change of formation of the products. Okay, well the products are the carbon monoxide and the water. So the enthalpy change of this reaction is equal to the sum, which is twice because there's two of them, twice the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon monoxide, plus, because it's the sum, twice the enthalpy change of formation of water, And then that is all, subtract the sum of the enthalpy change of formation of the reactants. Now the reactants, we have one mole of ethene, and I'll include it for clarity, the enthalpy change of formation of oxygen. Well, even two zeros are zero. Remember, the enthalpy change of formation of element in its standard state is equal to zero. If I solve that, I find I get negative 846 kilojoules per mole. And you can see by doing it this way, there's no need to use a Hess cycle and we get the same answer. Again, a quick note, this only works when we have entropy changes of formation. Thank you. Good night.